Okay, this is the beginning tutorial for chapter two, and we're going to start with, uh, in the circular functions chapter, we're going to start looking at specifically uh, what a circular function is, and we're going to look at this, the three graphs of the sine, uh, tan, and cos graphs, and what they look like specifically, and, and maybe look at our, how to draw them and how our calculators can draw them as well. Now, as you uh, revolve around the unit circle, so I have a picture here of the unit circle, and I probably have described this already, but I'm just going to redo it here in the tutorial. Sometimes it's a, a difficult concept. So as you revolve around this circle, so this length here of this point P is always given a unit of one. That's why it's called the unit circle. And then what happens is uh, you revolve around the circle. And what you do is you look at the cos point and see what's happening to the cosine as it goes around the circle. And as it goes around once, that's called a period or one revolution of the circle. And you can also look at what's happening to the sine as well. And finally, thirdly, you can also look at tangent because tangent is, uh, is actually the same as saying sine over cos. So that's uh, why you can look at the three fundamental uh, relationships in the um, unit circle. So let's take a look at what would happen if we had sine. So if we were here at zero degrees, Okay, at zero degrees or zero resolutions of, of radians, we would be starting right at the zero point on our graph. And then it would rise at a nice equal pace until I hit 90 degrees or two, uh, pi over two radians. And then it would become a one value for our sine. Okay, and then as we go, because sine, Sine is the y point, that's why it would become one up here. And then it would drop down evenly at the same way that shape that it dropped here until we got to 180 degrees or pi radians on our graph. And then it would be a zero value. It would hit the axis, the y axis at zero. And then it would drop below at, in the same shape that it had here and here until finally it hit its minimum of negative one. And that would occur at three over two pi radians or 270 degrees. And then it would come back up to zero uh, as it goes through the last part of its graph. As it goes up to 360 degrees or two pi radians, it would then come up back up towards the zero at the same shape that it had around here. So as you can see, that would, and then that would repeat itself as you keep going around and around the circle. So there would be one period of it. And that's what the sine graph would look like. Okay, and that's kind of how the unit circle works. S similarly, the cos point here would be similar. It would start at, if we look at, at zero, the cosine value, okay, the, the x point would be a zero here. Okay, there would be We'd have to start here, up here at 90 degrees, because that's where the cos point has a zero to start with. Okay, as we look here at our, sorry, I put a zero here. This should be a one, right? That's why I was confusing myself, right? Because we can't start here because that should be a one, right? There's one, a length of one there. So be careful about that. So if you look here at the cos point, we have to start up here at 90 degrees is zero. So at 90 degrees or pi over two radians, we'd have our graph up at the top. And then it would have a similar shape to the sine graph as it would drop down into a negative one. So it'd be going below the, the x-axis. Okay, then it would rise up to zero again here. And then finally it would rise up to a maximum of one, and then it would drop back, uh, at, of course it would rise here, this would be at pi radians, and then here at negative one, its minimum would be at 270 degrees or three over two pi radians, and then for the coast graph, its maximum here would occur at two pi radians or 360 degrees, and then as you go back to around again, it would drop down to zero at the next multiple of 90. So it would be like 360 plus 90 degrees, which would give us 450 degrees. Or if you like, um, you could take your, your 5 pi over 2 or radians as well. OK, 
Okay, so that would be cosine and sine. Now the tangent graph is a little bit more difficult to tell just by looking at this unit circle as we go around it because the tangent is one divided by the other. Sine divided by cosine is equal to tangent. If you remember our tangent is y over x or opposite over adjacent and, and if we have sine which is opposite over r or opposite over hypotenuse and cosine which is adjacent over hypotenuse and we put them over each other the hypotenuses cancel and we get tangent. But we can't really tell what's happening to the tan graph here. We have to, we'll have to draw that in a, in a different way. So the last thing I want to say in this tutorial before we go into drawing the, the graphs is I want to look at what an amplitude of a function is here. Let me just center that up a little better. And what we have here is we have that an amplitude of any function is its maximum value minus its minimum value over 2. So if we looked at the sine value, okay, we'd have 1 minus minus 1. So that would be, because 1 would be our maximum and our minimum would be negative 1. 1 minus a minus 1, which would be 2 over 2. So the amplitude of sine and cosine is actually 1. So I'm going to stop there in just a little bit of an explanation. And in the next three tutorials, I'm going to be sketching the sine, tan, and cos graphs for us to do, to be familiar with, and probably using the calculator as well.